Hello, everybody. I hope um, you, you can hear me. Um, my name is uh, Gilberto de Bellian. I'm broadcasting here from, uh, from Oslo, Norway, in my private practice, which we have a, a little studio here. Um, and today um, we're going to discuss about root canal irrigants and disinfectants, uh, which uh, it's going to be transmitted through the Dental uh, Tribune webinar sections. So my aim is uh, basically to have a presentation. Um, as you can see here, we have a microscope, uh, which we're going to do some kind of a live experiments. And we're going to show you and share with you uh, some uh, old things and some new things. And I would like to thank uh, Purdue Dentier in, in, in Switzerland to give me the opportunity and contact to have this webinar together with you. So I will get started uh, the first, uh, uh, the first uh, presentation here or the first part of the presentation and stop uh, in between. Uh, it's going to be on a, uh, you know, a slide presentation and then uh, in between this slide presentation, I can show you some other things. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, when you have questions uh, at the end of the section, so you're going to be asking me and we're trying to uh, answer you. Uh, just to give an idea about the time, uh, I was asked to have a, you know, a webinar about one and a half hour. I understood now that's about one hour. So I'm going to skip some of the uh, things uh, in order to meet the one hour, one hour plus, and then we do the questions at the end. Without uh, further ado, so let's get started uh, with the first um, slide. And I think, uh, um, let me see if we have here, yes. So it's extremely important for everybody before you you know, talking about irrigation to understand what we are doing in endodontics. Uh, basically, we're trying in endodontics to uh, avoid or cure a disease that's connected to endodontics, which is apical periodontitis. In a vital case, we do everything to avoid the bacteria goes inside to the root canal by cleaning, by shaping, by irrigating, by blocking or root filling, and then we put a very good um, permanent filling on the top to avoid contamination of the root canal space. Now, when this is already contaminated, so the disease that uh, you know develop at the apical part of the root canal, it's called apical periodontitis, and most of it, it is an inflammatory reaction on the apical part, trying to avoid that bacteria that's inside of the root canal comes in contact with the bone. So this is an inflammatory reaction due to the fact that you have a teleological problem inside of the root canal. Now, it's very important to understand what we're dealing with. They are microbes. Microbes are in high volume sometimes in a platonic way, sometimes uh, in a biofilm way, 70%, maybe 90% as shown here in the, in the slides, are in the main canal. However, you have to understand that the root canal is not one canal, it's a root canal system. So these uh, organisms, first and foremost, they will organize themselves by making a layer of organisms in the root canal uh, walls. And this we know, the biofilms today, they are extremely hard to remove from the root canal. So not uh, irrigation will be a not, but irrigation combining with uh, mechanical instrumentation, that's going to be the best result for eliminating this biofilm. It's like in periodontal uh, work, uh, the periodontist normally will be scraping the surface, not irrigating the surface. But in the root canal, we can combine the two actions. The other area that we have to um, make sure it is that uh, we are going to be working on it, it is inside of dentinal tubules. Bacteria that it is actually not only um, in the main canal, they also penetrate inside of dentinal tubules. And this is the only 
substances that or the action that it can work and eliminate the bacteria inside of the antinotubules are going to be the irrigants and medication. So dentinotubes will also be infected. The other area also which is very, very important, it is the isthmus area, the area between the, the root canal. I mean, the two root canals, especially like in the lower molars, so you'll see a very well-adapted gutta percha, but the area between the two canals here is full of tissue, full of debris and microorganisms. So this area, the only way we can reach this area, it is by using irrigation solution. But how to press the irrigation, uh, irrigation solution between the two canals? This is the main question. We can deal with needles, we can deal with ultrasonications, we can deal with lasers, and so on and so forth. This is what we're going to discuss. The other thing I want you to uh, realize or appreciate, or maybe, you know, even some people get a little bit depressed about the fact that the internal root canal is very complex. This is not only one canal, like I told you, it's a network. And since it, it is a network, you have to understand that the main uh, instruments, whether manual instrumentation or rotor instrumentation, they are not going to get inside of this tremendous network that you have and the communication between the two canals. However, the main canal has to be cleaned well. And the way to clean the root canal today, we're talking more and more, it is to avoid to pack dentino debris inside of these communications. If you press the breeze inside of the communications, you're not able to reach the area with irrigants. So the root canal, it is complex. We knew this before. Today with CT uh, or micro CT technology, we can see how broad the canal is and how complex it is. So mechanically, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to reach these particular areas here. And this was well described by uh, Frank Paquet and uh, Uwe Peters for many years ago, showing to you that instrument in the root canal, these are distal roots in the lower molars. And here it is very clear. Untreated areas range from 60 to 80% from the total canal length. So this is untreated areas and 65 to 75 percent for the apical portion that are untreated areas. That means that here is a very good experiment where they had instrument the root canal to a number 40, F4, F4 plus 2. So, so they are different, but in fact the canals were pretty well instrumented to a number 40. Of course, if you go to our number 50, 60, and 70, so the numbers of untreated areas are going to be reduced. But we know that even though you can increase to the entire you know, length of instruments, still there were going to be a lot of areas that are untouched. So, and this is very nice slide, uh, courtesy by Dr. Gustavo de Bideus from Brazil, showing to you that we had developed instruments that are fantastic, rotary, nico titanium instruments, and so on. But we, are, we cannot predict where these instruments are going to touch in the coronal middle part. Uh, so I'm, basically this is the, the point here of uh, irrigation of the root canal or only instrumentation. So the thing it is that instruments will touch the root canal in different areas. And not only that, but today with rotary files or reciprocating files, whatever system we are using, unfortunately, there is a problem that we don't touch the root canal wall. At the same time, we accumulate a lot of dentino chips. And these dentino chips that are accumulating laterally in the oval area of the root canals can be a problem for us. So this is a very nice slide showing to you that before the instrumentation, we have no um, whatsoever the presence of debris between the canal. And here you can see after the instrumentation. So after the instrumentation, so um, so after the instrumentation, what happened? It is that there is a um, a accumulation of debris between the canals here. So as you can see, sometimes our instru instrument and instrumentation system are creating more debris, and this is very difficult to remove from the root canal. So we have to be careful and see. This had been seen 
and it had comment for many years ago by Paquet and, um, and uh, Uwe Peters as well, showing before the instrumentation and after or during the instrumentation, the amount of the deep debris that are accumulated. And it doesn't have helped you, you know, to obturate the root canal with the debris. The infection will be there. So I basically uh, gave you just a kind of a feedback or a, just, a, you know, a basis for the the endodontics it itself, and now we're going to talk about the second stage. The instrumentation, the mechanical part is the first stage. The second one is the irrigant that combined with the first one, and the third one is obturation. But when it comes to irrigants, I think it's important to understand that traditionally an irrigant was used to help the instrument to cut dentin and to facilitate the removing of the cutting dentin that was accumulated during the instrumentation. However, the most important quality of the irrigant, it, it is actually the antimicrobial property. And this is uh, very, very, very important uh, since the major etiological problem, it is microorganisms. Or, so the desired irrigant action that was described by Zander for many years ago and it is to have a broad antimicrobial spectrum and a high efficiency against anaerobic and facultative microorganisms organized in the biofilm. It's important that it dissolve necrotic tissue, inactive endotoxins and microorganisms by, by products. Also prevent the formation of smear layer during instrumentation or dissolve the latter once it has formed. And it should not be caustic. I mean, you, you, you cannot, in a way, create the problem for the patient because you have a high, um, basically a big and high um, uh, caustic effect or cytotoxicity of the product. So this is very, very important that we keep it as low as possible, but high as possible to efficiently kill microorganisms and dissolve uh, tissue. So this talk. This talk will be separated in three parts. I'm going to talk about the irrigation instruments and devices first. We're going then afterwards talking about, uh, we'll discuss about the chemical solutions. And finally, at the end, the protocol that we uh, recommend that we teach in our uh, you know, schools. And these are all based on evidence that had been published into the literature. When it comes to devices, this is the basic device for irrigation. This is a syringe. But look at this. I think it's important to mention one thing to all of you. Please, if you don't use a lure lock a type of syringe, you are running a high risk that this syringe will detach from the needle and it will actually hurt your patient, not the clothes, but maybe the eyes or, you know, every, everywhere. So when you have a lure lock syringe, this is the normal and the good endodontic practice. I know this is a basic thing, but I had seen in many practice that still they use a regular connection to the needle. When I'm talking about the syringe, then normally we are going to be using between five to 10 milliliter syringes. Some people like to use the 20, but I think the, the stample or the, the plunger will be too hard. When it comes to the needles, there, there, there is a huge difference or a huge jump from maybe 20 years ago and today. When I went to the dental school, maybe even in the, uh, you know, the end of department uh, for 25, uh, almost 30 years ago uh, in the United States, so we used to use like a 25 gauge uh, needle. And then with time, we realized that the irrigation was not reaching the apical part, and then it started to go to 28, 30 gauge. Today, the normal standard uh, size of a needle, it should be 30 gauge. Now, the question here, and, and as you can see here, there are different types of uh, syringes, flat tips, uh, tips that are open to the side, like a side vent, uh, flexible, rigid, and different types of uh, size. So, so there is a huge amount of different tips. And basically the tips, they can be like I told you, a flat tip 
can be a side open, can be a completely open side, side vented two side vented and small holes. The question it is that which one is the best? Uh, just to differentiate between the ones that are open on the tip and the ones that are side vented. There's no question about that the ones that are open on the tip, they increase the velocity of the irrigation and increase the apical pressure of it. So be careful when you use the open uh, tips because the irrigation solution will reach the apical part faster than the side vented ones. And I recommend the side vented ones because they are basically, um, you know, um, they, they actually, they are, um, um, they, they avoid to have the extrusion of the irrigation solution. Uh, and uh, because it's not open on the tip, only to the side. And if it gets clogged up with the tip, so the irrigation will emerge or it will escape on the coronal part. So just be careful when you use the ones. And here you can see from the study, the apical pressure that you have is huge when it's a flat bevel and notched. And when you have the side vent, it decreases. The other thing also, this is a very nice study from Christos uh, Botsiakis from uh, uh, Okta Group was done several studies with uh, von uh, uh, der Sluis from ACTE as well. And here it shows that as you increase the size and the taper of the root canal, so you will get more circulation of the irrigation solution with the side vented ones. And of course, it will decrease the apical pressure when it's a flat tip. And here you can see very close on this um, uh, table here that when you have a uh, small size and you increase the sizes, so the apical pressure of the irrigation solution will decrease because you have more space and more scape area. So 25, 25, 4, 25, 6, you're going to increase dramatically the pressure on the apical part and even with the side vented ones. So be careful when you do this, all right? So I recommend to use the side vented ones and do up and down movements. Now, the brand new um, irrigation uh, tip uh, that was launched at the IDS, this is a phenomenal idea. This is uh, Prudentair, it calls uh, Iriflex. This is a polypropylene uh, tip, which is extremely um, uh, flexible. There are two sides uh, of, um, of uh, irrigation vent, and they are about 45 degrees. I'm going to show a little bit more specific about that. So it's a phenomenal tip. It's uh, the best tip, and I'm going to prove and show to you how good this tip is. This is a 30 gauge with a four taper, so 4% taper. There is a 27 millimeters length of the tip, and it is with death marks. The death marks are 18, 19, 20, and 22 millimeters. 60 degrees, very good, very easy um, accessibility that you have inside, a lure lock, and also the side vented, which spreads the irrigation to about, uh, I think it's about the 45 degrees. And the sheer pressure that you have the wall, it's uh, basically excellent. So here is a video from PD that uh, has been given by the, the group, just to show you a little bit about the tip. And this is um, 60 degrees. Uh, and, um, and a flexible uh, tip. The flexibility is enormous, as you can see. Soft body and to curve flex like, you know, it's, a, it's a very, very flexible. And I'm going to show some clinical cases. And so the irrigation is, uh, it's, it has this particular uh, angulation that allows the uh, irrigation solution to be spread in that particular angulation. And as you can see, the shear stress effect, it is higher than the regular uh, side vent. There is no article at this moment published with the, what kind of uh, you know, pressure you have. But when we see clinically, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty much uh, decent and, and big, as you can see here from this video as well. So beautiful, and we see clinically, and I'm going to show you some cases that I had done in the practice. So it spreads pretty much comparing to the one side, 
and or the double vent uh so so the the pressure the, the the it's not going to be that high as the e reflex is so basically that's what it is um here i think there is a very good demonstration to show you in extractitude that the tp will be migrating in a curvature if you use, uh, you know, this is just, uh, if you use a metal uh, tip, it's not going to reach anywhere, so you have to pre-bend it. And even if you pre-bend it, there is a risk that you can, you know, break the tip of that particular file. So here it goes all the way around. Uh, this is actually, I think it is a film. I, um, let's see, yes. This is basically in my private practice just to show you the death marks that you have. So when I use the microscope, it helps a lot for me to keep observing the death marks. Sometimes I even can put like, a, you, know, a, a, you know, a brownish or a, a, a dark dot uh, on that area to facilitate and to see easy. But with the microscope, you can see very, very well. And look at this. It's so powerful that this is MB1, MB2. Uh, the patient came back to obturate the case on so removing calcium hydroxide and as you see irrigating from the mb2 so all of a sudden you see a lot of calcium hydroxide coming from the mb1 and i'm going all the way down to the apical part it's important never press hard and i was always keep moving up and down so that's extremely important for you to do this kind of movement so here is um, um So here is another case. I think this is a very neat case that shows you this is a upper premolar. Well, apparently nothing too special, but there is a huge curvature on the double curvature on the apical part. So here it is just a confirmation that I use a number 25 just to show is a nico titanium file. I'm going to use a number 30. The canal has been cleaned to a 3004 taper. Um, it's 90 millimeters on the buckle and 80 millimeters on the palatino canal. So just to make the story short here, I'm going to now show to you a metal irrigation needle. So I'm just putting a 30 gauge, I just make a mark here, and then I go down into the buccal canal. As you can see, it doesn't go anywhere. Of course, I could pre-curve it, but you know, sometimes you don't know exactly where the curve is. So it's not basically irrigating, it's very frustrated to cases like that you go down. So you're not actually irrigating and bringing the irrigation solution all the way down to the apical part. So here, just to give an idea how curved this canal is, and, uh, and we had clean with Nico titanium. I can talk about that afterwards. But just to show you the same case, so 18, 19, 20 millimeters, and I'm going to show you placing the irreflex on the buccal canal, just straight like this, and you see, bang, goes right to the 90 millimeters uh, depth. And and of course, I move it up and down, never press your irrigation uh, needle or um, uh, syringe. Just move up and down and then keep looking at your um, uh, working length. Uh, I, w I tend, I, here is a demonstration to you, but I tend to be like maybe one millimeter. And you see the curve of the tip. It's very, very dramatic. You see very, very well how curvy it is. But, you know, uh, just here to make a point is 18 millimeter. Try to be a little bit short and always moving the tip up and down. This is to um, decrease the apical pressure, as I told you before, and also to allow the irrigation solution to move up and down. And here you can see the small details. Very nice, very neat. No reflection because the metal ones, when you see with the microscope, it will be a lot of reflection. So this is the Eerie Safe, and here, after we had, in this particular case, we had done the, you know, irrigation protocol, uh, and which I'm coming back to you, uh, adapt the gutta percha to the position, we'll take an x-ray here, just to see uh, how precise uh, the, the gutta percha is. Here is basically, I had used the XP 
uh, shaper and finisher to clean the entire root canal. Now I'm using a bioceramic uh, sealer, which is this is the total fuel, and then I basically obturate the case with a single cone technique. And here I'm placing a uh, a composite, a uh, flowable composite. This is, uh, we have today more and more some cons composites that are hy hydrophilic, which is, uh, you know, a new uh, um, a trend for some of this. And here is the case, the end of the case, showing the obturation of the case and also the flowable composite on the top. So here it is, and I think I'm basically going to jump now for the um, demonstration here. I'm going to do or show some little experiments for you just to have an idea how this uh, tip um, behaves. And so I'm going to change to the microscope here now, and you're going to basically see some of these blocks I had previously prepared. And let me just put in focus here, and then you're going to see some of these um, basically blocks. So I had, uh, just to give an idea, I had basically uh, prepared some blocks. Um, and the reason for that is to show you, in, you know, different types of anatomies of, uh, you're going to see different behaviors. So if we start with a 20, you know, 2504, and I'm going to, by the way, take a look and see. So this is, um, um, this is basically uh, to show you, this is basically uh, the e-reflex, which is here. It comes like in a, you know, in a sachet like this. And, uh, and you basically, it's sterile. So you just open like this and then you take it. Then, you know, the tip, which is here, the assistant will be doing this and give it to you or placing in the uh, syringe, as you can see here. So it's a lure lock. So you're going to place it here and firmly that is well adapt, right? So I go back to the microscope now, and then you're going to see it, um, you know, uh, different types of um, uh, preparation. So if you take a look, this is a 2504. And uh, if you take a look on the tip of the, um, uh, the ear reflex, you can see that's almost reaching the apical part. And this is a 24, um, 2504. Now, if I take the same kind of dimension tip with the metal one, and you see where it stops. If I press a little bit more, then you see that it bends the tip. And that's what we are a little bit afraid. And you never know where it's going to irrigate. It's going to irrigate one way or the other one. So this is 24504. So if we take the double curve, which is the double curve here, also prepared to a 2504, you see that the ear reflex almost comes all the way down, a little bit difficult because it's a double curvature. And definitely the metal will not uh, touch. This is a 2506, and then you see a 2506, the tip it reaches almost all the way down to the apical part. Let me put some irrigation here so you can see the tip reaching almost to the apical part. And of course, the 2506 on the double curvature, it comes a little bit closer to the apical part. But definitely, uh, we recommend normally to use a, you know, a minimal preparation of a 3004. And in this way, you're going to see that the tip comes all the way down to the apical part, so we are able to irrigate. And I'm, I hope you can see the tip moving. Maybe I'm going to decrease the, the lights here so you see a little bit better the tip. And I'm going to increase the magnification so you can see even better. Let me take the droplet out, and you're going to see the tip moving all the way down to the apical part up and down. So this is a 3004. And if you see a double curvature of the 3004, it's basically the same. Let me clean the surface. And then you're going to see basically the same here as reaching all the way down to the apical part. So this is 34. And of course, if you take, you know, regular teeth, and um, basically this one has been prepared to uh, uh, you know what, 3004, 
This is a, a nice, uh, actually a copy of uh, a human tooth. And here you can see that the tip reaching the apical part and doing the irrigation uh, all the way down to the apical part. So definitely comparing this to that particular uh, irrigation needle, which is the, um, the metal one. So uh, you see that, well, this is already taken. So let me open a, a new one, which is somewhere around me which I cannot find anymore. Anyway, so, so the metal one, it will have a huge difficulty to reach the apical part, even though if you have a, a little curvature over here. So it gets stuck, stops here, and it doesn't progress more than this point here. Also here in the second curvature, it stops over there. So I think it's extremely important that we, uh, we look at this and understand the value of this particular um, uh, tip. So we're going to show other things a little bit uh, later on, but uh, basically I'm very impressed about this particular uh, irrigation uh, uh, tip. Let's go back to the, to the presentation. Other devices like um, Endovac has been, you know, um, uh, kind of a popular, it has been very popular. I think it was introduced for um, first version for maybe 15 years ago. It was a lot of tubing, a lot of um, pipes around the patient, but they had improved the formula. And according to uh, the studies, because this is endovac, is a negative pressure uh, irrigation. Instead of pushing the irrigation solution down to the apical part, actually what it does is the opposite. You put the irrigation solution through a specific uh, syringe and device, and then you go with a suction inside of the canal. And then you have a macro and you have a um, uh, macro and a mini one that it comes all the way down to the apical part. The mini one has a lot of perforations on the tip and just suck the solution. So by sucking the solution up, it produces a tremendous um, you know, movement of the solution. And according to um, uh, the studies, it shows that it's a very good way to irrigate the canal. Um, it presents uh, in several studies, uh, you know, uh, a high amount of microorganisms that are eliminated by that kind of irrigation um, uh, device. The only thing about the endo endovac for many people, it is that maybe a lot of tubings, maybe the cost, uh, the complication, but uh, nevertheless, it's, uh, it's a very good alternative showing very nice results. Of course, as anything in the literature is going to show some studies showing very good uh, results by eliminating organisms, comparing with hand uh, uh, irrigation or just a regular hand ir irrigation. Uh, but uh, some of the studies show that there is no significance between the, that uh, endovac and uh, hand instrumentation. The other very popular device, it's called endoactivator. And I guess this was an idea maybe from my good friend from France, uh, Professor Pierre Mastou. He used to uh, use gutta percha to pump the irrigation uh, down to the canal after the final kind of irrigation. So he used to go down into the canal with a gutta percha and pump up and down. I think he came to the idea to create a plastic off-centered uh, tip with different types of um, uh, dimensions, which are going to be rotating and creating a vortex down into the canal. And according to the studies, it shows that, uh, you know, it's a very good device, but uh, some studies show that there is no big advantage on the apical part. In the coronal part, it looks a lot of vortexing, but when you come in the middle of an apical part, it seems that it does not so much than what we expect. And in fact, in these studies, we can see that the endoactivator, we only call you know, sodium hypochlorite, it did a do so much when you basically combine with EDTA. And so if you see the group without the endoactivator, 
and with the end activator so there is no major difference it's just because of the edta so but you know uh, it looks good some big canals is good but when it's double curvatures it's small curvatures and a small dimensions canal it can be a little bit more limited uh, the King or the queen for many of these uh, irrigation devices has been ultrasonication. It is, uh, you know, a device that will produce a lot of uh, vibration inside of the canal. And this vibration that you have, it's tremendous. And this vibration, it will create two things. It's cavitation and micro-streaming. The directly uh, contact with the, the ultrasonication on the t on you know dentin structures is going to remove a lot of material, but this is not the way we use the um, uh, ultrasonic in irrigation. We like to use ultrasonication in irrigation to create a cavitation, and inside of irrigation it will create micro bubbles. These micro bubbles will, will implode and bring a lot of you know. Uh, dentin debris inside of the, the 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 main canal, so the communication between the canals, the action of the irrigation inside of the network, it will be enhanced by this extremely high velocity that is produced by the ultrasonication and the irrigation to be pushed inside of these areas. First. The ultrasonic is going to uh, create the, mic the um, uh, cavitation, which is going to implode the micro bubbles and remove a lot of dentin in the entrance of these areas uh, between the canals, and then it's going to create this micro streaming, which is going to bring a lot of solution inside. Now, the tip that I showed to you is Irise from Satellite, which I like it very much. It can be um, very susceptible to fractures, so don't increase more than 20-25% of your irrigation uh, ultrasonic unit, so otherwise it can break very easy. And this tip is not supposed to remove dentin, it's just to create the cavitation and micro-streaming. Now, from Brazil, Helsi, it's a very, very brand new uh, company that has one irrigation tip that calls Irisonic, it's a 20 with one taper, 1% uh, taper. It can be pre-curved. Also use a 10% uh, energy in your ultrasonic device. And basically all these ultrasonications that are very flexible, they are very prone and susceptible for fractures. So run it very, uh, very, very slow. The only disadvantage of ultrasonication it is that when it comes close to the apical part, if there is a curvature, it might be that the uh, ultrasonication start to vibrate. So whether you pre-curve or you use other alternatives, as I'm going to explain to you a little bit on. But definitely, there is no question about that comparing file, gutta percha pumping, plastic endo, endo activator, and ultrasonication. The ultrasonication shows tremendous amount of penetration of the irrigation solution comparing to the other groups. So the other groups, they will have a little penetration inside of the structures, but the ultrasonication will be three to four times more than the conventional ways of doing. And you see in the main canal, you have a enhancement of the cleaning in the main canal. But what is a great advantage of ultrasonication is basically that you increase a lot of cleanliness inside of Isthmus area, but you have to unblock the entrance of the Isthmus. Ultrasonic will produce the cavitation and clean this area and then bring the solutions inside of these particular areas between the canals solution. And now two nomenclatures that we use in the uh, ultrasonication and one is fill up the entire root canal and pulp chamber and you use the ultrasonication. But then you have the other um, nomenclature called CUI, which is the continuous ultrasonic irrigation. This is when the 
irrigation comes through your handpiece and through your tip and continuously renovate the irrigation solution. So these are the two different types of terminology. Here is a study from Brazil showing the different types of irrigations, um, you know, uh, uh, navy tip. Uh, so you have a navy tip with brush, which I don't think it exists, maybe discontinued today. Then you have the manual uh, dynamic irrigation. We've got a partial, which is the pumping. You have the ultrasonication, which is cooey and pui and the endovac, and they try to find out what are the irrigation devices that clean more the root canal, and here again showing to you that this high score, number four, showing that the ultrasonication and continuous and passive ultrasonication, it will produce more clean canals than uh, other types of devices. So let me just go on, and the last device, I wouldn't say a device or an instrument in the same category as uh, ultrasonication. It is a new file that calls XP Finisher. This is, um, it's a group of, you know, um, two types of files that are expandable files when it comes to the body temperature they will be expanding. And, and, and this finisher file we use with the irrigation in order to allow the irrigation to reach different areas. So the finisher, it's within the category of devices of irrigation because it is almost like a, a, you know, a perio um, curette that's going to basically scrape the root canal walls. It's a very thin file. It uh, basically doesn't remove dentin, it's just scraping the surface of the root canal and going in areas that, uh, you know, regular rotary fire cannot do it. But basically it's to remove soft tissue, dentinal debris, and debris in the canal or the network system entrance. And so basically this fire is sensitive to temperature, so if you touch or if you put inside of the root canal, it will bend automatically because of the memory shape of the dicotitanium that has been memorized at 34 degrees to expand. So how to use this file? Well, basically, it's a very small file and expands to almost a three millimeters diameter. But the file goes inside of the canal and the tip is going to be projected if you press the belly of the instrument. By projecting the tip, it basically scrapes the root canal walls uh, back and forth. So it's a very fascinating file. You can see here, this is a file that will be bouncing you know, underneath of areas that could never be uh, worked before. So it is a scraper and combining with the irrigation that it can go in different direction. And as you can see, this is a lower molar with a very broad apex uh, and, you know, two canals. And you see how the file is bouncing up and down. And this brings the irrigation in areas very, very, uh, you know, tough between the canals. So, very, very interesting file uh, and uh, giving a lot of attention now lately uh, because this is a file that actually is going to be, um, you know, cleaning inside of the curvature, not only, um, not only uh, on, the, um, on the inner part of the curvature, but the outer, uh, the outer part of the curvature, but the inner part as well. Let me take, uh, show you uh, some little things from uh, the microscope now. Let me move uh, to this particular tooth. Um, this is a, um, let me put you in contact with this uh, particular tooth. Let me, and this is a, this is actually a Buchanan tooth. This is the lower molar I was talking about. And this is just to show you the divergent area that you have between the canals. And the file that I was uh, discussing with you, this is a file that here it is. It's a, it calls uh, XP uh, finisher. It comes in a blister. It is a file that comes in the ruler. And when you take it out, so it's a little bit expanded, but if I put in a hot water or in the body of the patient, it's going to expand even more. So I'm just going to show quickly to you how this instrument will behave inside of the root canal. Just going to put some irrigation here with the reflex, of course. 
And now I'm going to use uh, the motor and I'm going to show you the navigation of this uh, file inside of the canal. So I just put it at uh, approximately uh, 1000 um, RPM, this particular file. And then I'm just going to bring it in the right position so the file will migrate inside of the root canal. Let me just increase the temperature of the canal so you see um, and then you see the canal bouncing down into the you know area and sometimes it can go inside in the different positions or different canals as well so this is and you see that it scrapes the root canal walls in a, in a very very nice way let me take the glare out from the microscope and you see how it, you know, let me put in focus. So there we go. So you see the tremendous amount of, you know, areas that are touched by this kind of instruments. When it comes to the, um, you know, when it comes to the um, ultrasonication, let me show you another tooth. Um, this is basically, um, you know, a tooth that I showed to you previously. Uh, this is uh, instrumented to a um, the particular shaper, and uh, and uh, and we didn't use the finisher, but I just wanted to show you how the ultrasonication will basically um, provide. A communication between the two canals so I'm going to point out now to the area between the two canals as you can see here there is a, a virgin point here between the two canals I'm going to use um, the um, ultrasonication the iris safe I'm going to start with the Kui and and I think you can take a look and see from the micro from the um, this particular camera here um, and you can see, you know, the, the basically the movement of the irrigation solution being spread. And maybe if I put a kind of a dark, you see the amount of water coming through the system. So this is very, very dramatic, the amount of, uh, of irrigation solution. So... If I bring it here down into the canal and um, you're going to see maybe some, some activities, even sometimes some bubbling on the area between the canals. This is with the, with the Kui and, and then I'm going to show to you with the Pui, but here you can see it. Look at the bubbling between the canals. And this is the kind of a cavitation created in this area tremendous cavitation and communication between the canals so this is very very important to demonstrate i cut in the solution now i'm going to do a pui now which is a passive uh, irrigation so only with ultrasonication down and you see the amount of bubbles creating this area spreading from one canal to another but you see that even though i'm using this uh, I'm not able to come all the way down to the apical part as opposed to the Erie flags or the, um, and, the, um, you know, a finisher file that comes. But it's neat to see that if we use sodium hypochlorite and work in these areas for 10 seconds and so on, so there is a huge amount of, you know, communication between these areas. And I think this is very important to use as part of your uh, irrigation uh, protocol. So let me uh, go ahead and go, you know, through um, these particular uh, two things that I want to tell you about devices. Lasers are also devices that... Um, So I hope that uh, you still can see me. Um, so lasers are um, devices that we um, have been using. 
uh, but because of the cost and so on. So lasers are a device that should be introduced in our protocol. However, the general population of dentists will not get access to this kind of uh, devices. But what a laser does, increase the energy, energize your irrigation solution, and double the, you know, even triple the effect of uh, uh, ultrasonication. And you have the photon-induced photoacoustic streaming. This is a very interesting tip that will produce uh, 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 my, not the micro bubbles, but huge bubbles that will implode inside of the root canal because of the energy caused by these tips and a big movement inside of the root canal. So uh, some studies show no difference, other studies show great difference. It's always like this. It's a big investment, but I had the pleasure to have Dr. Olivi here in Norway showing to us the PIP, and it's very, very impressive where what the machine can do, and, uh, and we, we were very happy with their, his um, uh, presentation and demonstration, which is very, very impressive machine. So the photoacoustic uh, devices shows to remove um, biofilms and layers of films, and are, um, you know, for the ones that have, they should absolutely use it. But again, it is a costly technology, unfortunately. This is the latest One Gentle Wave. It is a um, device that had been introduced now, um, um, you know, probably two years, three years ago, called Sonendo from California. This is a device that will produce a lot of, um, you know, um, um, uh, produce several frequencies of ultrasonication. I think it's about 100. You know, ultrasonication produce one frequency. This machine produces, you know, almost like a hundred different types of uh, frequencies. And there is a uh, special irrigation system. Uh, in, and the way it works, it is that you put a specific cover on the tooth, which is sealed, and then you connect to the handle or the, the contra-angle that will send you some irrigation solution and suck at the same time. But at the same time, we produce this uh, tremendous uh, vibration inside of the tube. This vibration is believed, and it has been shown into the literature, that we will break down the tissue and we will act as a, a uh, propagator of the irrigation solution down to the canal. In fact, there are very uh, nice study by Marcos Rapasalo here, and I know that NYU also had used this, uh, as Gary, uh, Sigerson also, Dr. Ben Johnson uh, also uses and promote and, uh, and recommend. And, and this is a machine that really remove a lot of structures. Again, it is a costly technology for now. Uh, is, uh, everybody is, you know, endodontists are scared that now is finished with instrumentation because this is a system that you basically don't instrument the root canal. Maybe Hapasalu here has done the instrumentation to a size number 20 and used uh, Sonendo, some other people are doing, because the problem is not only to irrigate, but how to root fill a case like that. So this is the major question, and uh, I know that um, the, the people developing the Sonendo are basically uh, developing a system to uh, also operate the uh, root canal. So this is, I would say, something that's coming more and more, very interesting technology, maybe uh, costly at this moment, but uh, interesting to see the amount of tissue, the amount of organisms that are eliminated by comparing to the regular technology. Time is going by. We have to talk about chemical solutions. Uh, the chemical solutions that we are going to describe, and I'm going to be um, pretty much uh, go to the point, we have several types of irrigation solutions, sodium hypochlorite, EDTA, and citric or citric acids, acids chlorexidines, the etidronic acid or etidronate, which is the HAT, MTAT, Q-mix, iodine components, and hydrogen peroxide solutions. And I think the, the ones that our people mostly are using are here on the top, uh, these are new things, 
this I think that will probably combine several irrigations at the same time doing a combo kind of irrigation because we want to avoid to have several irrigations in our cocktail however it seems that still the kind of a combo type of or a combination between these different types of irrigation are very efficient now we have a lot of uh, things a lot of products a lot of uh, concentrations sodium hypochlorite uh, EDTA uh, and uh, and so on and so forth when it comes to sodium hypochlorite there is no question about that still it is one of the best if not the best irrigation solution to dissolve pulp uh, vital or necrotic organic components right it's a potent antimicrobial agent uh, and, and act over the biofilm and dentinal tubules. The substantivity of these products are not so high. It doesn't penetrate so much in dentinal tubules and has other solutions, but still it is a fantastic solution. And so also um, inactivate endotoxins. So there are many, many studies showing that, that it breaks down the tissue and at the same time it will basically uh, neutralize endotoxins. When it comes to the concentration, this is the big issue. It seems that low concentration of sodium hypochlorite with special needles, with good instrumentation of the root canal, it will be doing so well as a 5.25% sodium hypochlorite. People are afraid more and more to use high concentration of sodium hypochlorite. I don't want to scare people. Uh, if you use this decently, I'm, I'm sure it's okay. But the evidence in terms of removing tissue uh, and also uh, killing organisms shows clearly that you don't need to go over 3% of sodium hypochlorite. 525, it can be uh, very toxic. And, you know, if you don't have any um, problem with that, the people that had projected the irrigation solution beyond the apical part with high concentration, it creates a lot of problem apically. Necrosis and, you know, ter terrible symptoms for the patient and so on. When it comes to retreatment, no question about that, a higher concentration, but it doesn't need to go as high as 2.53% because Enterococcus fecalis is resistant to 1% of sodium hypochlorite. So that's why in retreatment case, we should increase a little bit more. But, you know, in a lecture of uh, half an hour now or 10 minutes, it's difficult to go through the whole literature. The bottom line, it is that you irrigate with high volume, but low concentration of sodium hypochlorite is going to be as good as high concentration of sodium hypochlorite and it's safer. Now, if you don't uh, instrument the root canal to uh, a minimum size, uh, let me see my, yeah. So if you don't instrument your, um, basically your root canal to, um, you know, a minimum size, if you keep it 20, 25, 0, 06, 0, 08, and use 5, 25% of sodium hypochlorite, it's basically, it's going, to eliminate, it's going to not eliminate as much bacteria as 125% of sodium hypochlorite if the canal is clean better. So the point is the volume that you have with sodium hypochlorite, if you have, you know, low volume of preparation of the canal, the sodium hypochlorite high percentage, it's not going to do much on the apical part. These advantages, of course, of sodium hypochlorite, its toxicity, uh, cannot remove its mere layer and high concentration. Some authors say that it can reduce the collagen or increase the collagen degradation and that it can reduce the flexibility of dentin. So these are studies that also come more and more. And the latest studies, maybe two, three weeks ago, shows, uh, you know, more percentage of postoperative symptoms with high concentration of sodium hypochlorite. So these are things that uh, definitely we should take into consideration. Now, after we had cleaned the root canal, and as I show you, uh, there is a lot of smear layer that are produced inside of the canal, and no question about that we need to use a K-Lent. So EDTA, for instance, it is uh, you know the, the K-Lent that we use to remove a smear layer 
has no or very little antibacterial effect, but it only removes the inorganic part of produced inside of the root canal. Citric acid as well. The difference it is that citric acid is it produces less erosion on the peritubular dentin compared to EDTA. And this is especially if people are going to be using composite-like materials inside of the canal or uh, elsewhere because you want to have a better bonding and it seems that citric acid functions better than EDTA. Today we're using bioceramic materials, so I don't think that there is a, a big matter between these two. So EDTA that you have in a market, PD, uh, Purdue Dentaire has its own. You have different types of um, you know, EDTAs in a market. You buy the one that you basically think that is uh, more available for you. And, um, and, uh, and that I think it's, uh, it's something that uh, you have to consider. Now, I just want to talk about this. This is um, slides from Matthias Zender. It is something called uh, etidronate, which is a calent. This is a HAP. This is basically a, a power that the basically, um, I mean, this solution that you produce, it's able to be more active than EDTA. However, what is very interesting about this, it is that you can combine with sodium hypochlorite. In fact, you can mix sodium hypochlorite with HAP. That means that you're going to have one solution with antibacterial properties created by the sodium hypochlorite and the HEP, which is the kaolin. Because um, many companies try to combine sodium hypochlorite and, and uh, EDTA, it doesn't work. One neutralizes the other one and both loses its chemical um, uh, properties. So, and Matthias, um, you know, had done some experiments with this and shows very clear that you uh, mix this with one or five percent of sodium hypochlorite with HEP and you're going to basically see that there is no inactivation of the sodium hypochlorite and this is very 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 important. So what we are thinking about it is to uh, and this is what Matthias is using uh, it is to use one solution, one solution that contains sodium hypochlorite and EDTA at the same time. This is going to facilitate our irrigation. Uh, we don't need to use two syringes, two needles, and you know, uh, two steps in the irrigation part. Now I jump to the next one, which is chlorexidine. Should we use, should not? Should we use chlorexidine in the beginning? and replace sodium hypochlorite, should we use at the end? Now, it's important to say that chlorexidine, it is a fantastic antibacterial uh, solution. It kills gram-positive, it kills E. fecalis, and it has a high substantivity, penetrates deep inside of dentinal tubules, and it has a long antibacterial effect comparing to sodium hypochlorite. The limitations and this is important, why we should not use uh, chlorexidine as a main uh, irrigation solution. Because it's unable to dissolve necrotic and vital tissue, it's less effective of gram-negative, which sodium hypochlorite is much better. It's inactivated by pus, blood, exudates, and react to sodium hypochlorite. That's important to also say. So we recommend, uh, and the other thing is that the chlorexidine, when the canal is clean and the dentinal tubules are open, it penetrates very, very, it has a high substantivity and penetrability that you're going to see the um, um, irrigation almost going through the entire tooth. So comparing to sodium hypochlorite, maybe we reach about 100, 200 microns. Uh, chlorexidine will go about seven, 800 uh, microns. So it's, uh, and there is a lot of studies showing to you. So important to tell you, never irrigate the root canal with chlorexidine, just place it at the end. And I'm coming back with that when I talk about the irrigation protocol. So let me go um, directly to the, uh, irrigation protocol. The only thing that I just wanted to, um, you know, um, explore with you, it is, um, you know, the last part of the, you know, uh, the, the, the presentation itself. It is, should we use me medications or not? 
uh, should we use a single versus a multiple visit treatment with uh, apical rhodontitis? Just to make the story short, we normally recommend to do a single visit endodontic treatment for all cases with vital pulp and necrotic without apical periodontitis. However, with apical periodontitis, we have a big uh, controversy in the literature and a big discussion between the different groups. Some groups do everything in one visit and some groups do in two visits. Some studies show good results of one visit with apical periodontitis, other results shows two visits. And these are many, many, many studies. There are even books, there are even chapters discussing that. One important thing to discuss here, it is don't, don't rush anything. If you are not clean, the, uh, if you have not cleaned the root canal sufficient and you're not comfortable to root field the tooth, don't do it. Don't obturate the case just because one visit is better than two for some authors. We know that even though we try to clean the root canal as good as possible, the canal will never be uh, free of organisms. It's always going to be about 20-25% of microorganisms. So we know that obturating a case with the presence of microorganisms inside of the root canal, it will decrease your prognosis. Some maybe cases will show no countable bacteria, but when you use genetic method, yes. But what we are more um, concentrated is in the countable bacteria, like cultivation methods. So the thing it is that we don't say that calcium hydroxide it is a fantastic medication, but what we believe it is that in the second visit, when the patient comes back to you in the second visit, you have a better chance to lower the amount of counts of microorganisms. So if your baseline in the first visit was 100%, at the end of the first visit is 22%, maybe calcium hydroxide is not killing everything, but it's keeping basically the baseline as low as possible and the second visit you reduce the irrigation uh, protocol and reduce more of microorganisms before you obturate the case. So the point that I'm trying to say to you it is that is not right and wrong. The only thing it is that one visit treatment with apical periodontitis is extremely sensitive uh, uh, treatment in terms of the operator. It's like placing a composite filling in a wet environment. So it's very sensitive technique. So you should make sure that everything is clean. You use the right irrigation protocol. All canals are found, no corona leakage, and so on and so forth. For endodontists, this is more comfortable. But for the GPs generally, I would say be careful. Don't push you too hard. Maybe it's better to put a medication, bring the patient back, and then uh, repeat the clinical protocol that you use. Now I go directly to the um, uh, protocol we recommend, and then we conclude this section. I, like I told you, I was um, prepared for um, almost like a two hours lecture when I got the message just five minutes before the seminar that I should reduce to one hour. So I, I'm trying to do my best. The protocol we recommend, uh, it is based on, you know, the evidence that we, we, we have. These are things that we had been practicing, uh, not only the, the, the dental practice, but also in different schools, University of Pennsylvania, Chapel Hill, uh, here in Oslo to some extent. Um, here it is that we use whatever endodontic file you use. Here in my case, I use the shaper. Uh, we use between one to three percent, depending if it's a you know a vital or a non-vital or a retreatment case. So we use the irreflex, we use irrigation, we use you know the the shaper file, and here we use the finisher with 30 seconds of sodium hypochlorite and 30 seconds with EDTA. Now, today we're using more and more the HEP, the, the dual rings uh, that uh, Matthias Zender had recommend. I know that um, Matthias uh, started a study to show if um, we can skip these 30 seconds of sodium hypochlorite DTA with the finisher, uh, and some other authors are engaged on that as well.
By the end of this first visit, and notice this is a vital pulp protocol. At the end of the, um, the, the use of the finisher, we're going to conclude our irrigation with Kui or Pui. I normally use Kui and for 10 seconds. And then we dry the canal and we obturate with bioceramic material. This is vital pulp. The difference between the vital and the non-vital it is that basically non-vital cases are the same from one to four. Now, in the step number five, we basically just fill the canal. We just soak the canal with 2% chlorexidine uh, uh, digluconate that's suspended in water for five minutes, at least five minutes. We don't irrigate. It's very important. It's, you just soak the canal. So that means that you dry. This is um, salt water that I have used here. We just soak the canal and then keep it for five minutes, dry it, and place a intracanal medication. For the second visit that the patient will come in back, uh, maybe in between one to four weeks, with a good temporary filling on the top of the case, we repeat the operation three, four, and five before we go ahead and obturate the case. Of course, if the patient is asymptomatic, no abscess, sinus tract, the canal is dryable. So these are basically the protocol that we recommend based on this information. I mean, if you want to read a little bit more about all this irrigation solution and so on, Dr. Martin Trope and myself in the book of the Dagor Stavik, Session Endodontology in the second edition, we have a chapter number 12 that we basically have four or 500 uh, references here in this uh, chapter, which we basically uh, uh, you know, use as a base for teaching and so on and so forth. I would like to finish this presentation by thanking you uh, and all of you that had been connected. I want you to have the opportunity to invite you to come to Oslo and attend one of the courses that I have in my private school, which calls Enduin. We have an advanced uh, course um, activities. Uh, in these uh, 12 units uh, with microscope uh, here in Oslo. Just go to the website and look at the courses. This is, this is a little uh, example. We have uh, teaching now with 2D or 3D microscopy, which is a very good um, uh, tool. And I just I have a little film here that I want to share with you uh, with the teaching center here in Oslo uh, before we go ahead with the um, questions. All right, so uh, so let me, uh, the, the first question here from uh, from uh, Benoit, our pleasure, Gilberto. Okay, so this is not a question. The second one is from uh, Bernard Frey. Gilberto, maybe it's a good to place a rubber stop on the irreflex needle for the doctor that do, does not use the microscope. Look, Bernardo, um, it's not easy to place a uh, rubber stopper on the irreflex. They are extremely flexible. If you do this, it's going to destroy the tip. And I'm sure that the doctors can see the tip uh, very well. I'm sure also that the Purdue Dentaire, maybe uh, with the second generation of the irreflex, will make um, you know, the mark a little bit more visible. But, but I don't recommend you use the stopper because otherwise it's going to ruin uh, the, um, the tip of this uh, very flexible instrument. Another question from Bernardo. If you use FKG uh, expandable finisher, does it uh, still make sense to use the ultrasonic atrium by Eurisafe satellite? Or can I replace ultrasonic? Look, according to the studies, and unfortunately, I didn't have time to explore that. But there are at least two or three studies showing that XP finisher, it's actually better than ultrasonication when it comes to scraping of the root canal surface on the apical and middle level. On the coronal level, it's pretty much the same. Now, the combination of the two, that is going to be better. So if you choose between one and the other, it seems that XP finisher is better than ultrasonication. However, if you want to increase the speed between the canals, which the 
um, you know, uh, there is one very nice study showing that you have a penetration of irrigation when you use the expert finisher in dentinal tubes about five, 50 microns. But the ultrasonication will penetrate even more between the uh, isthmus area. However, if you use the ultrasonication first and the XP finisher afterwards, it's not the same. So if you choose one and the other with the combo, finisher first, uh, ultrasonication afterwards. And there is a question down here. Thank you for the webinar. What is COUI and PUI? Like I said to you, the PUI or PUI, it's the passive ultrasonic irrigation. That means you fill the entire root canal and pulp chamber with the irrigation solution, and then you work for 10 seconds, whether sodium hypochlorite, EDTA, or whatever. And then you work passively. Now, the CUI or CUI, it is the continuous irrigation solution. This is when you have a peristaltic pump and a, a bag with the irrigation solution going through your system and the tip of the ultrasonication. That spreads the irrigation solution through the tip and then it makes this renovation more actively. So I hope uh, I had answered that question. Uh, question from uh, Dr. Eugenio Granodoro. You have show uh, and uh, irisafe with water in the video. Do you recommend to use irisafe with or without irrigation? I think I, I answer you. I normally, uh, in my clinical protocol, after I had used uh, the, um, uh, in vital and non-vital case, after I used the finisher, uh, shaper and finisher with irreflex, so I used the, um, um, the CUI, the continuous ir uh, ultrasonic irrigation with the irreflex, but with salt water. And I have here behind me, let me see if it's possible to show you right there. So you see there is a um, peristaltic pump to the satellite unit. And this is a stereo salt water going through this, not through the system, but to the side of the system. So I use salt water. But when it comes to treatment cases, then I do the PUI first. I activate after the, 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 the finisher file, which is the mechanical part. Then I basically um, do um, uh, the CUI, the, the, the PUI, that means passive with sodium hypochlorite and EDTA. But today we're using the HAP from Matthias Zender. And then I clean everything with the CUI, with, so, uh, with salt water. Okay, so I hope you, you got that. Is there any consequence due to do irrigation of root with solution to start with? It is sodium hypochlorite EDTA first and chlorexidine afterwards. Look, I don't know if I really understood the quest, but the, the, the initiation of the pulp chamber, we always like to irrigate the pulp chamber first before you go with files. So normally I use uh, ultrasonic tip, specific ones. Is uh, I can show you in courses uh, if you come to Oslo or any other place, but there are specific tips that we fill the entire pulp chamber with sodium hypochlorite and then we use the tip to activate the sodium hypochlorite before we go with the hand file okay before we go with the hand file but you remember when we go with the hand file the first time the canal pulp chamber has to be dry because you're using the apex locator did you try the endo ultra from cotane micromega no i haven't and i wish i could do it and uh, and I'm you know I'm planning to do so if you have very good um, uh, devices anonymous uh, doctor so I would be very very pleased that you can share with us but at this moment there are, you know we get so many devices and we try to keep the things that are um, you know simple but definitely it will be very good. Is there any consequence of to do the irrigation with solution? Oh, no, okay, I had answered that. Is there any relationship between irrigation and the bioactive root sealer? Well, um, some people, or maybe some of the studies, show that if you one of the solutions that can integrate with the bioactive or the, the bioceramic material it can be EDTA or citric acid, the acid type of materials. Because these particular materials, they are uh, hydrophilic. 
they uh, release um, uh, hy hydroxide ions and produce calcium hydroxide and then hydroxyapatite. So they will be basically inactivated for that kind of reaction if the environment is uh, full of EDTA. But in our protocol, as I told you, at the end, we eliminate all these irrigation solution with salt water with the CUI. Uh, congratulations, excellent. And uh, yes, I hear you. First of all, thank you, Associate Thank you so much. Ah, Eddie, of course. I'm really, really sorry, Nino. Look, uh, it's so limited. And the Ed is included in my lecture. It's the sonic uh, type of, um, of you know, uh, tip. The EDI also shows very good results into the literature. You can add that because it's more flexible. It penetrates more into the uh, tip of the root canal. So I'm sorry not to mention because I jump a lot of slides. But EDI, according to the literature, it is one irrigation uh, tip that uh, it's uh, as equal as uh, ultrasonication. Maybe one advantage that it goes a little bit deeper on the apical part. But since we use the finisher uh, file, the XV finisher, it really it cleans a lot of the root canal. So ultrasonication and the eddy will do the job very well. What is your recommendation how to apply this calcium hydroxide? Look, I have a beautiful video to show you and also evidence how to apply the calcium hydroxide. So basically, um, the calcium hydroxide that we use it is, I'm going just to show like here because I'm supposed to show you on the microscope. This is the Calacet Plus. It is a pure calcium hydroxide PA. It comes with a specific tip to deliver inside of the canal. However, you can never trust these needles uh, that because all this is a, a air trap on the apical part. So we basically recommend to run a specific bird that calls Sensipast. If you go to the to the web and take a look sensi past it is a burr that will bring the the calcium hydroxide evenly down to the apical part and take all the air trap that you have there so you can condense very very well so um so i, I would say um that definitely it's a good way to do not only with the tips and and filling some of calcium hydroxide we're a little bit concerned uh, i don't want Want to say the name here because I don't want to uh, offend anybody, but there are some calcium hydroxides that will produce a little clug or maybe like they petrify on the apical part. And for some reason, those calcium hydroxides, um, it doesn't behave the way that calcium hydroxide does. They are very thin. So please, doctors, when you apply calcium hydroxide, just look at in the pulp chamber that the calcium hydroxide migrates back to the pulp chamber. If it doesn't, it's going somewhere. If it's not in the sinus of the patient, it's in the mental, you know, foramen or the mandibular canal. So please, always never step with the tip and go up and down. So your question, you know, so Ed is better than the other metal tips? No, it's not better. So it can be equal to the metal tips. Uh, some reports show better, some reports the tip show better. And I guess that most of the studies, they are not calibrated. Some, you know, uh, when you do the material maths of these studies, they have to be comparable and that can be very, very difficult. But there is no question about the um, huge amount of studies that have been published. It is with the metal tips. So, so um, anyway, so anonymous again, Eerie Safe broke sometimes. So since I use Endo Ultra, I feel more secure while using this device. Beautiful, wonderful, very, very good. So keep using what is safe for you. Okay. So I think uh, we're pretty much through. I don't know how many people had been uh, connected. I got uh, a, a connection in my telephone that there were one doctor that couldn't connect. I don't know why, but anyway, I hope you guys um, uh, got some tips here today, and I hope I can come back with uh, different types of uh, webinars, a little bit more extensive maybe with uh, this particular hands-on demonstration to you from here. So thank you and uh, good evening for you. And if you want to contact, you contact us through the email with questions and so on, and you're always welcome to come here to Oslo, Norway.
Good night for all of you. Bye-bye.